This is just a game-changing plugin for Obsidian, in my personal opinion, because when you look at places like ClickUp and Notion, they're database-focused, and Obsidian always struggled, in my honest opinion, to do this very well. DataView was great, but you needed to understand queries, how DataView queries worked, how code blocks worked, getting the syntax right, but Bases, the new core Obsidian plugin, does it for you. There is a simple, nice, really easy uh, interface, which we can use, and I'll go through it now. And so here I have a base. It is a table view in a base. I will go through all the nitty gritty details in a second. But essentially, if we go back to this Obsidian file, previously we had properties. Properties were things that you could add into a file. So when you go control P, go into the command palette and type Ooh, properties, you could add a file property. These properties are what the bases, the databases, are using for columns inside of the table. So here I have tags. If I left click on the icon, go property type, I can change this. Well, I can't change this because it's a tags property, but I would be able to change the type of this property to text list tag, which is what this one is, number, checkbox, date, and date and time. If we have a look down here, we've got property type, it's a checkbox, and this is simple, ticked or not ticked. We then have a date and time, so when I click on the date icon, I can add a date and add a time to it. If I was to change this from date and time to date, see the time's gone, so now it's only available with the date. Let's go back to date and time. We then have a description, which is just text property, I can just write as much text as I want in here. Areas, which is a list property. So if I was to type in, these are actually from other files with the same property field. So if I type in home and then push enter, you can see an X has appeared because this is now one option in this list. For those familiar with Notion or ClickUp, this is like your select or multi-select property. And I can click on life and then work. Now I have the three, click on X and they disappear. Then we have the estimate, which is a number property. If we come in here, number property. So if I was to come back and type in H, you can hear it on my keyboard. It's not actually accepting it because that's a letter. If I push nine, nine goes in. Then we have, this is a star rating, but I put an emoji in it. Um, well, it's not a star rating. It's what I called it. I called the property star. It's actually a text type and I've added in an emoji. So I'm on Windows, so I push Windows, full stop brings up the emoji uh, window and then you can add in some emojis. I've added in a star and then we have a rating as a number property, which I'll get to in a minute. I do want to say thank you to, I don't know how to say, Asteen, because what they've done is they've created a formula inside of bases. So you can see all of the properties here are the default properties inside of Obsidian. But when I go to this base, I'll show you how to create one in a second. Over here, you can see an F and it's a formula. So you can now create a formula property inside of Obsidian. If I come up to properties, uh, you see number rating here. If I click on the arrow, go to edit property and make this a bit bigger. You can see this is what Asteen posted in the insiders channel of the Obsidian Discord. If contains, so the rating property, which is this number property here, if that contains a one, make it a one star. So it's showing one star. If it's a two, two star. So the two makes two stars. Three, four, five, six, uh, three, four, five, etc. So this is a formula property. If I come into property, I can add a property. And from here, you can type out your formula. But I don't want to do that. And so if I come into this number property and type a five, it's now added five stars, which is, I mean, that's just one of many features in this basis plugin that is just awesome. Yes, I believe you could technically do this before, but this is far easier. If we step over to the Obsidian help pages very quickly, you can see introduction. This currently requires early access because it's version 1.9.0. So you need to be an insider to be able to have access to this. And then it will come out into the public. But you see, you can create a base, views, functions, basis syntax, which I'll go through in a bit. But if we go over to the functions here, you can see there are lots of options. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert because I don't understand code. I'm not a developer, I'm not a coder. I just use no code tools and research stuff. But there are loads of options in here to create formulas. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what other people create. Before we leave the help docs and have another look at the uh, the bases, you can see the roadmap. Bases API for plugins to add more powerful custom functions, so more types of functions. So I assume that's more formula opportunities. 
more view types so at the moment it's just tables but we've got list cards maybe even a calendar view because we've got date and date time properties which would be really nice as someone that likes planning stuff grouping files and aggregation functions also coming so summing averaging so calculations inside of the bases and then obsidian publish support which is nice if you use publish but let's come back to Obsidian and have a bit of fun playing around. So if I go Control P, that brings up the command palette. You can see bases, you can create a new base. So if I click here, it's now showing me a table at the top. That's the name of this base. And then I've got the name property, which is actually just the name of the file. And then a ton of files. It's showing me all of them. So there's like 7,000 in there. In the files core plugin, you can see there's the files core plugin. You'll notice base. That's the name type of the file and it's currently untitled. So the name of the view is table. The name of the base file is untitled. If we go into settings, core plugins, bases is a core plugin. So you won't need to add a community plugin, data view or uh, database DB or any of the other database community plugins. It is a core plugin. So part of core obsidian. If we then take a look at the hotkeys, you can see we've got a couple of custom hotkeys that we can link with bases. So you can change the view to a hotkey. So changing the view from table to table two or table three, or when we have lists and calendars going from a list view to a calendar view. You can copy the table to the clipboard, create a new base, insert a base, but this is the one, this is the hotkey that I imagine I will be using a lot. So if we use, let's use Alt-V for the moment, if I right click and delete that file, because I don't need that one, and go back to this testing file, so it's a testing file base, but I'm in the example folder view. Now if I push Alt-V, I can now see these different views that I'm in. Example folder view, due this week view, or high rating view. If I click on here, you can see they're the three views that I've created. I can add a new view if I want. And if you do end up creating tons of views, you can then search through it in a, uh, in a filter search, which is quite nice. But let's explore this example folder view first. So when I click here, we have an arrow next to the view. The view settings then take me to configure view, which I'll go through in a second. Duplicate view. So if I want to duplicate everything in the view, push that one. Example folder two, layout is currently table. Maybe in the future we'll have more than that as mentioned in the roadmap. So let's go back to configure view. You can see it's added in that view. It's duplicated the view. You can see it's duplicated the view. So when I come in, I can then duplicate the view again. I don't want to, uh, I will delete this view in a second. Copy to clipboard. So it copies this base as a table. So if I copy to clipboard, come into this file, and then paste inside of the file, I now have a table, an obsidian table from the base created inside of the obsidian file, which means you can copy and paste a base filtered view into obsidian. And you can also see the formula output is actually the output that we were looking for, which is quite nice. You could also export to a CSV. So it works in Excel. I've tried it. It works just as you would expect. I'm going to delete this view because I don't need it. Go back to the example view, go into the configure settings, and from here I can change the name of this view, I can change the layout, but most significantly, I can change the number of results. So if I push two in here, now it's only showing two results. If I push four, it's showing four results. So if you have, say, thousands of sources and you only want to show a couple of hundred, you can put in a couple of hundred, which is what I've done with my sources folder, because my sources folder has 5,000 or my 6,000 files in. So I don't want to see all 6,000 and scrolling down. So, so I add a limit in the view, in the configure view settings. But you'll notice I'm only showing a few files, and that's because I filtered for the example folder. If I come up to filters, you can see I have two different sections here. I have all views, so all of the views inside of this base. So one, two, three different table views, go to filter. I have all of the views follow this, so folder contains example. If I click on the code, this is actually what it's doing. It's looking for contains file.folder example, so the name example, which is the name of the folder, which is why if I go to this due week view, it's only looking for files in the folder because the filter inside of the all views section, you can see here, we're currently in the example view. This view has a filter. If I go to this week, go to the filters, it has the same filter. If we then go to the high rating, go to the filters, it's got the same filter in because it's for all the views in this base file. Then below the all views, we have filters for this specific view, which for this view, I don't actually have any filters in. So it's showing me all of the files inside of the folder. But any filter that I do add can be for all of the following are true. 
any of the following are true or none of the following are true. So if I was to click into here, even though it says property, it does actually accept files. So I can say the file is in what folder, links to what, has tags of what. So has tag, lists all the tag, links to, and then gives me a lot of links to files. So is it linked to my quick notes file? Or is it in a folder? There's the folder, so books. So oh, <laughs> it's now going to get rid of all of it because I have the all view saying, hey, is it in the example folder? And then I'm filtering for things that are in the books folder, which obviously it can't be. And if we click on the code, you see it's pretty much the same. But that is the file option. We then have extensions, path, name, and then any other property. So if I look for that star property that we had, I'm now looking for this star text property contains one star. So all of the following are true. So does it contain at least one star? Yes, it does. Any of the following are true. Well, I've only got one in there and then none of the following are true. So now it's kind of reversed this. So I can actually reverse it again and say does not contain. So I've got two negatives. Does this not contain none of one stars, which it, uh, yeah, negative negative equals positive. So it's actually looking for the stars. Hopefully that made sense. But within that, you can see we've got is, is not, contains, does not contain, is empty, or is not empty. And we can add a filter, so an individual filter with or, all of those options. Uh, let's just delete that. Or I can add a filter group. And so I can group different filters together. And I've actually done this inside of one of the other views. Let's just remove all those filters and go to the due this week. Go into filters. I'm looking in this view for anything where the date is before, can't actually see it, but it's Sunday. So is there anything before Sunday? And all three of these dates are actually before Sunday. But now I've added in a filter group and said where the done property doesn't equal undefined. So if there's nothing in the property, as in it doesn't have a property, or if it's not complete. If I tick this, it's now looking for something that's done. If I tick it off, it's now looking for something that's not done. So these could be tasks due this week that are done or not done. I can then interact with the property, say, yep, I've done that. Now it's going to go because I've completed. Tick it off. Now it's gone because it's completed. So now we have a task list from the file level rather than the task block level inside of Obsidian. I can also edit the other properties so I can come in here and add a date and let's just change the time to 12, I don't know, 33, something like that. And we go 12.33, done or not done. Oh, I need to tick it off again. There we go. <laughs> um, and if we hover back to the example view, just to show that it works with the tags, there's the tag option. I can write anything in a description field. I get the option with the list fields. The star option, again, is the same as uh, the description because they're both text properties. Numbers, I can edit. Listing, the formula, I can't edit because it's a formula. And this is a formula property that I don't actually want. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, and as you have just seen, here's the properties. These are the properties that are being shown from the files. If I click on the arrow, I can then edit the property just like I did with the, or oh, just like I did with that formula. If we go to the done property, edit property, and from here you can change the text property. I don't really want to do that. Maybe it will change it inside of the file, but it could break some property information, so I'm not sure. Actually, let's just give that a test. So let's go to edit the property, change this to a checkbox. Oh, it doesn't seem to have changed it, even though I've changed it inside of this base. Maybe that is a bug because we are working things out, or maybe that's something that they haven't quite addressed yet. Oh, that was meant to be a date and time, wasn't it? But yes, here are the property sections. You can add a property or search for any property inside of the Obsidian folder or the main Obsidian Vault folder that you're using, which I have quite a few. So I've just typed S and you can see I've just got tons and tons and tons of properties, which obviously will require a little bit of cleaning, but I could and probably will just completely ignore it and use the properties that I'm actually actively using. So that is this uh, due this week view and you'll notice I can click and it opens up the file, which is nice. Uh, and of course, if I come in here and then change the book, change the article, so there's no tags on plugin three, go to testing, plugin three, properties. Let's just show the tags. Where is it? There they are. Now there's no tags. Let's add the article in, go back to here. The article has been added, so it's very quick and seamless going through. And so I think we can head down to the high rating view and you'll notice I'm sorting by stars. So you can sort the file properties. And if I come into properties and add in the number rating, we've now got the rating. I can I can order by the rating number instead of the stars, but in theory they should be the same. I think I've added them the same. Uh, let's just bring up the rating number. 
Yeah, well, yes, actually, they are slightly different. So the rating formula is doing what it's meant to be doing, and the stars are inconsistent with the rating number. So you can see I'm now sorting by rating second and then rating number afterwards. So let's go here, here, here. And so the sort orders, so you can have multiple sort orders, which, again, is what you would expect in a database. It's just It just works. It's nice. Now, something I have noticed, don't know whether it's going to be consistent or not, because we are still testing things. If I come in here and say rating number, there's no formula property. So I think the formulas are saved to the base. Uh, if I come back here, this formula property right here, ooh, right here, I think is saved to this base. So I'd need to create another view in here. Yep, that will do. Then properties, I now can use the rating number formula right there because it's in this base. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know about you, but I'm now going to go through my Obsidian, ordering some of my projects and adding file properties to tasks and things and seeing what bases I can create. So let me know in the description what you reckon you'll use bases for um, and what formulas you come up with, because I haven't thought about what formulas I would even want or need yet.